Today, the concrete panels on the shed are starting to go up. There's two, three loads arrived, still 12 to come. Just nip around all the animals just now. Then need to go and help the joiner uh, push up the walls uh, that are pre-built pre on the floor, push them up onto the sides. Uh, Duncan's way spraying, and Kevin's on the way along the road today. Got a wee party of cows following me this morning. Morning, Holly. So I'm just in the field of rape at the moment. Big break now. That's it. Wow. Should be a squad uh, here today to put up the net uh, on the shed so they can put the roof sheets up uh, just for safety reasons so that's why they're at the walls today they crack on with the walls until the squad's finished putting up the net then they can start the roof um, concrete panels see them there so these are the concrete panels and then what they do is they bolt these in concrete panels so they lift these into position use these brackets tighten them down um, to hold them in position while they build them up, all four of them on top of each other, and concrete them in place. Currently trying to drag these sheets out of that shed because we need in with a forklift. It's taking its time, slide it along these battens. Don't take long with the concrete panels, that's one layer on one side up. We've got another lined up along there, a few down the bottom and then they've cleared all this already and there's a pile here. So they're getting through them, there's another all 10 loads to come. Another load of concrete panels for the shed there, just picked up the van for the new smashed window, well the, the smashed window that was replaced. That's that load of concrete panels coming off and then they'll start putting them up. So yesterday's question on the trailer. What's the cylinder uh, and, and it is the air cylinder for the air brakes and tractor. Tractor's got a compressor, pumps air into here, brings up the pressure. Then, so when you're driving, service brakes, pressure is um, released into the drums, uh, the shoes at the drums, and then they expand and brake along through a short air cylinder. Pressurized air is used for the braking system on these. Dunks are out there spraying on the spring barley. The nets are starting to go up. See the green nets there? Just allows them to work on there and if anything wants to go wrong, they'll fall into the net and not the, not go splat. So these are gonna be four high. Uh, they'll go up to those flashings up there, those purlins, and there'll be a, an angle that runs off them, just so if the grain, for some reason, it ends up slightly on top, it kind of runs off rather than getting stuck up on top of the ledge. Shifting these gates over to the field over there so we can get the cow and calf out of there and back into the field with the rest of them so she can run off the bull. So we've got her in here now. I'll just pull the trailer up to that gate and we can load her up. Uh, still need to dehorn the calf. So this is the paste we use. So that calf in there. On our chill, two nubs on either side. Put a wee bit of paste on either nub and it just burns the horn um, and it allows it, then it doesn't grow. So we'll do that and that means she's in the future she won't have horns, but easier to handle, safer for both us and can't injure other animals. So that'll do her. We'll put her out in the field now with the cow uh, and the rest of them. She's quite calm now. She was a bit uh, fiery when we tried to get her in the trailer. But... That's the calf dehorned and um, just put paste on each of our nubs and um, where the horns are starting to grow tiny wee bits. Rub the paste in, kind of twizzle the hair so the cow can't lick it so much. You can put duct tape over the top of them um, but that seems to work and do the job so she so can now go out into the field, her and her mother uh, and the mother will be running with the bull there. So. And that's the two of them out. She'll away and join the rest of them. But that's all 20 of the cows in here and calves all healthy. Lulu's trying to get in, she always chases the cows. Anyway, good to go, she'll run with the bull now. She's not too far behind the rest of them, so that's fine. I think she wants to be a calf. Come on, then. Just changed the uh, GPS signal uh, over to the new one, so 
Kevin's just out in his field giving it a try. There's a few options to change and settings to change on the box. And the uh, guy's phoned us up. Talked us through it, so we've changed it all and looks like it's going in a straight line, which is good. It's working fine. We won't really know till we're doing proper jobs with it. If it's repeatable and if there's no drift in the signal. Just talking to the Sparky at the moment because we need to run power from over there, the fuse box and the power coming in off the mains comes in in that direction. So we're going to run it from this corner of the shed all the way across to that shed and it's going to go across the beams in that shed, across the rafters. Big walls in, one of the sides, four metre tall. That's the biggest wall we've got for grain here. It's a belter of a wall. So that big wall is about four, five, I think five loads of concrete walling, four or five loads of concrete walling. Still quite a few loads to come to finish the back wall there, back wall behind me, another wall there. So, serious amount of concrete going into the shed, floor, six inch pad all the way across it. Another serious bit of concrete. So we've done half of the netting uh, on the rafters. This is the net they put up. That catches anyone if they fall. And then there's scaffolding along all the edges here, all the edges there. So basically once they're up and within the scaffolding, they can't go anywhere other than land on a net, which is the safest way for putting all the roof sheets on. So you can see there's still gaps, and obviously they'll come along with the filler compound, fill all these gaps, all these gaps. Um, the concrete will be poured to six inches, so it'll come up to kind of roughly here. Outside there'll be a packing compound put in first. Um, and then the concrete will then pour under there, pull it in there, and it'll kind of just seal everything off. That's the blocks that the, that's the steel that the blocks sit on. So they're on the base of each of the pillars, each of the columns there, as you can see. Coming along really nicely. It's an absolute beast. One thing I've not figured out what this hole is for, the bottom of this uh, columns there. I think they're on every pillar. If you know what they are, put them down below. I'll ask tomorrow, I'll find out what they are from the guys. Bowser for diesel. Kev's been around this trailer today with a rust converter and obviously a wee bit of sandpaper as well. Um, converts the rust to a compound that you can paint on top of it. I think it's a, like a zinc or something, can't remember. Anyway, he's done that on quite a few rusty bits on this trailer, getting them painted up. I washed it the other day, so this is the best time. It's actually clean. So you can see it kind of goes purpley. I think that's a zinc oxide. Paint over the top of it. Rust should be a lot better than when you just paint over the normal rust. Just spent the last wee while, I had a wee bit to chop on this piece of um, container. You take the length, make it shorter, the width as well, a wee bit shorter to fit in the doorway of the container. You need to also then box off the edges of these um, so it can be used as a doorway. We'll just go up and have a look uh, how the joiner got on today. Um, we were helping him shift up some panels that were going on the walls and then he was doing other bits and bobs. So here we are, this is how the kind of conversions looking now. So all along these edges will all get done. There'll then be a flat ceiling put on up to that height. The kind of objective with this is it's going to be our kind of stock area for the shop. So not, not food items, but the likes of hand towels and like bird seed, dog food, just anything, bits like that, that come in pallets and we can't put straight into the back of the shop because there's not enough room for all that. So that's what this store's gonna be. We're gonna add racking into here, maybe get a wee industrial forklift um, to kind of tear about on the floor here. Cause it's nice flat, concreted floor. We concreted this in February, I think it was. So that's why we're doing this. And hopefully once it's finished, it'll be a lot more organized. We'll be able to utilize the space a lot better. This section in here is gonna be an office to kind of control the stock uh, and possibly use for other bits and bobs. So maybe the, us in the farm will be able to use it as a, 
the RP in rather than a dusty gold workshop anyway to be decided looking good though this was in a question of the day and I forgot to answer it so it's a trolley jack and um, this is just a wee one use it for cars what's that two ton capacity yeah two ton uh, and then there's a big one there which is like six or seven ton for use that for tractors and heavy kit this is just kind of a low profile one easier for shifting about that one's pretty cumbersome and I'm